Hey up woodlanders, we have crept away from our usual woodland adventures. In part one, we dismantled, we flattened, we squared up and we refitted the oak archway. In this one, we're repurposing some oak flooring into architrave and getting the project finished. This is some oak I got from Black for B. I used to do this chap's garden and he had his extension porch ripped out because there was moisture tracking from underneath the ground and it was going into the oak. And what was happening, no matter how many times I tried, the oak was swelling and buckling. Of course he had all that ripped out. My next job for this is to try and get the nails out and the screws because what they did to try and compensate from it bowing and cupping and twisting and all the rest of it was wallop some great screws and plugs into the subfloor, which didn't work either. Get the screws out, get the planer out, whack it through the planer. So this is what it looks like in all of its varnish glory. Hello Bella. <laughs> and then when you put it through the planer, that's what it looks like. Tong side. Pour a fixing screw in there. First of all, it's batted through the thickness there. That's all the oak done, all before it started to chuck it down with rain. Look at that, looks amazing, stunning. And all this was chucked out on the yard ready for scrap. I reckon this is about half of what I had. So I'm hoping that this will do all the skirting in the living room, the diner. It will do an architrave all around the windows, architrave all around the doors and also an architrave effect all around the big square arch that I want to finish off. My next job is to put a chamfer on the edge of these and to try and tidy up some of these edges so where the, the nails and screws were that held them down I think I might have to plug some of those holes up especially on this is for the archway on the skirting board it won't matter so much because that'll I'll just make sure the top side's good and it doesn't matter about the bottom side but on the archway you'll see it from both sides I'm just trying to select the best bits I've got just got hold of a Stanley number five Let's see how this goes
have absolutely no idea, babe. Do you fancy? When fitting the architrave, I wanted to just use pegs rather than any metal or steel fixings. It's absolutely stunning. Laburnum. No wonder the wood turners love it. The shavings come off so clean. So I made some pegs from some yew I'd got in the workshop that was from Catton Estate and also some laburnum I'd had from Blackfordby in Leicestershire. The top architrave had to have some trims glued onto the end just to, as cover strips where the gaps were in the timber framing. And we finish it off with two coats of clear matte Osmond oil. And just as a quick addendum to this, Budo from the French Farmhouse Diaries, he contacted us via the messaging in part one and he mentioned about the stub tenons and how they should have been oriented, orientated, turned, <laughs> turned the other way about. And it was only when he mentioned that, and I, I kept looking at him thinking there's something wrong with these, but what really I think now is the actual stub tenons could have been through tenons because no one would have seen the top of the tenon um, square so that could have been possible and uh, that would have given me more meat to the tenon itself because it was they were only two inches high and I could have had them probably three and a half inches high and what he said was I got the tenon going lengthways and actually it should have been going the other way so it, it would have been quite short it would only have been about three inches wide and it, and it would have been about two inches deep then what I'm going to do is I'll draw it of how it should have been and while this isn't necessarily a timber framing tutorial at all uh, it may give you an idea of where i went wrong what i could do in the future and it shows the advantage of planning and drawing things out long before you actually start cutting anything thanks for watching this one i know it's not quite woodland activities but i just thought it was an interesting craft project and showing you what i did to rectify my own mistakes thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one wanted to show you these two pieces of oak I've got to plane these up for another project inside the house as well but I'd be interested to know what your thoughts are because I found these in the attic now the house is 1870s and these look like possibly 
part of the original fixings of the house. It's got a really interesting moulding on it, like a V shape. I don't know if you can, maybe you can see that. Perhaps if I hold it like that, you can see that V shape, which is a really fancy tongue and groove styles on this side as well. Look, so that's one piece. It's got some pretty big holes in it, top and bottom, as though look like possibly original coach style fixings. And then there's this one, which this one's just got simple, sort of one sided lap joint, which makes me think some sort of floorboard. However, all our floorboards in our house are all uh, old growth pine. So, anyway, let me know. Simply think, we well, could come out of a church for all I know, but I was going to reef reuse them inside the house and I thought before I machine them up I'd be interested to know what you think <laughs>